Over the course of 2023, I've been hard at work making custom content for the Gen 3 Hoenn games that you can inject into your real physical copies using the Nintendo e-reader without needing any type of ROM hacks. However, I know that most people who play these games do not have a Nintendo e-reader and the ability to print the cards. That's why when making these events, I made sure it was possible to get them into your game in several different ways. This video will be a comprehensive breakdown of every possible way you can scan, inject, and play these events, because I want everyone to experience and enjoy them. I'll be covering a bunch of different topics you may or may not know about already, so feel free to jump around and use this video as needed. First up is Mystery Event. In order to send my events over, you're going to need to unlock this feature. In Ruby and Sapphire, it's official and programmed into the game. To unlock it, you have to head to this Poke Center in Petalburg and talk to this person next to the computer. Type in the phrase, Mystery Event is exciting, just like this, and he'll say you've unlocked Mystery Event. Then save and reset the game, and it will be right there on the main menu where you select your save file. In Pokemon Emerald, it's a bit more complicated because this feature was removed from the menus. You have to use a custom software developed by Gopier, myself, and Undead Reality to unlock it in Pokemon Emerald. There's two ways to unlock it, but in either case, you need to unlock Mystery Gift to use it. This is a different feature from Mystery Event. To unlock it, go to any Pokemon and talk to the clipboard, and in the Easy Chat system, input Link Together with All like this. After that's done, save the game, and on the main menu, you will see Mystery Gift. So, how to use this software? We will first cover real hardware. To download this for real hardware, go to my Ruby and Sapphire custom events GitHub page and click the e-reader cards. Then click the Emerald folder. In there, you'll see a file called mysteryevent.gba. Download that. To send the event over, you'll need two GBAs, your copy of Pokemon Emerald, and a GBA flashcard or a fake GBA game. If you're using a flashcard, Insert the mystery event.gba ROM and load it up and you're ready to go. If you're using a fake GBA game, you need some way to overwrite it or flash it. I'm using a GBX rewritable and a fake copy of Pokemon Ruby that I have. If you don't have a GBX rewritable or some other dedicated device to do this, there's actually a great homebrew application for the DS that can do this as well. It's just a little bit slower. It's called GBAF. You just have to click flash ROM and it'll eventually work. Now that we have the distribution ROM ready to go, we just have to load up the software in order to start the distribution. The way this works is to put the wireless adapter into your GBA first and then load up your flashcard or the fake game that you just flashed. Once it's ready to go, open up Pokemon Emerald and click Mystery Gift. And then what you can do is click Receive Wonder Card and Receive from Wireless. At that point, the Wonder Card will send over and you'll see a nice little Wonder Card that Gopier and Undead made for me. Once the game is done doing that, you can reset and you can go to the second floor of the Poke Center and a new person will be there. Talk to him and Mystery Event will load. Note, every time you scan an e-card, he will disappear. So you've got to redo this process every time you want to scan a new card just for Pokemon Emerald. Now, if you don't have a flash cart or a fake game, or two GBAs and wireless adapters, you can still unlock Mystery Event if you have a way to back up and restore your save file. So let's cover all of the ways I know how to do that, and then I can explain to you how to inject Mystery Event into your game. If you're already familiar with this, please feel free to skip this section. If you own an R4 for DS, and a DS that has a GBA slot, you can use GBA Backup Tool to extract the save file onto an SD card that's onto your R4. If you have a Nintendo Wii and the Homebrew channel on it, as well as a GBA to GameCube link cable, you can use GBA link cable dumper to extract your save file. There is also GBA link cable dumper for the GameCube using the Swift software instead. If you have a Homebrew GameCube and a Game Boy player, you can use the software Game Boy interface to dump your save file, your ROM, and a GBA BIOS. All of this is important for later. To access this part of GBI, Hold Start and Select while the Game Boy logo is visible. There are also external devices like I was using earlier that can directly rip your save and your cartridge ROM. I have a GBX cart rewritable, but the Joey Joe Bags Jr. or the GB Operator are two popular alternatives. I really like the GBX cart rewritable. This is not sponsored or anything by them, but I just think it's a great product. It's all open source and it's pretty cheap. 
While you're extracting your saves this way, also make sure to dump your GBA ROMs, both for the game and for the e-reader if you have it. And like I said earlier, if you have a way to get a GBA BIOS, make sure to do that as well. Once your save is extracted, you'll need to download two things. WC3 Tool, which is a save editor that lets you inject events. You can find this on Project Pokemon. There's actually also an app just for the R4 for this, so you can do that that way as well. And then you also need the event on my GitHub, which is called mysteryevent.wc3. In WC3 Tool, load your save file that you just extracted and click Inject WC3. And then when it asks you for what WC3 file, select the one that you just downloaded. If it says the file already has a wonder card on it, make sure to stop the process here and then click export instead. This means that you have some old event preserved on your save file in some way, and it's important to preserve that and share it with the community for later if it's something rare. This could be something as simple as the Aurora ticket, or it could be the script for the PCNY wish eggs, which still haven't been recovered and made public, so keep that in mind. In any case, after that, Use whatever you extracted your save with to reinsert the save onto your GBA game, and now the Mystery Gift Man will be on the top floor of the Poke Center. Note, if you were saved in the top floor of the Poke Center already, the man won't be there. You have to reload the map by going down and up the escalator again to make him reappear. Okay, with Mystery Event unlocked, let's go over how to actually get these events into your games. There's three real methods you have the option to use. The first is for people who can back up their saves, ROMs, and a GBA BIOS, but do not have two GBAs, a link cable, or a flash card. The second method is for people who have two GBAs, a link cable, and an e-reader. The third method is for people who have two GBAs, a link cable, and a GBA flash card, or a fake game. And the fourth and final method is for people who have two GBAs, a link cable, an e-reader, and a high quality photo printer. Skip to these time codes for whichever setup applies to you. I will leave this hanging here for just a moment. Okay, for everybody who's trying to use the emulator and just your computer to send over the e-reader events, what you have to do is download the most recent version of MGBA and make sure to have the RTC functionality off. If you don't do this, it can change the date and time and make the save more annoying to work with. In addition, download whichever e-cards you want from my GitHub for whichever game you need them for. Okay, with MGBA open, you'll need the GBA ROM you backed up and the e-reader ROM that you backed up. Open a new instance of MGBA and then load the Pokemon game that you just back up. Then click load alternative save file under file and load the save that you just backed up. Then click new multiplayer window and load the e-reader ROM on that new instance of MGBA. It's important here that the e-reader is player two. You can see it at the top of MGBA's windows. Then, on the eReader MGBA, click File and click Scan eReader dot codes, and click whichever dot raws you downloaded. Now, the eReader is a little bit buggy right now for the MGBA multiplayer function. It's always running at a very fast frame rate for some reason. However, it's very easy to work around. First of all, if you're doing one of the Beast events, which are two dot codes long, you can actually highlight and scan both dot codes at the same time, so you don't need to do this one by one. Second of all, you can scan it right when you load the e-reader ROM. You don't need to wait until you're at the scan for dot code sections. It just loads this into memory. And then lastly, what you do is just click scan for dot codes and just mash the A button. And eventually it will get through even though it's glitching out a little bit. Then in the Pokemon game, load mystery events and the e-card should transfer over just fine. Once the event is transferred, you can restore the save file onto your cartridge and play as normal. If you want to continue playing on emulator, you need to make sure MGBA is using a GBA BIOS, which you should have backed up before. The current release does not accurately mimic all of the official BIOS functions, so the events will crash if you don't use this. To use it, click the Tools drop-down, and then click Settings, and then click the BIOS tab. For GBA BIOS, click Browse, and then select the BIOS that you backed up. Also check off the Use BIOS if found. And now when you restart MGBA, as in close it all the way, it'll have the GBA logo on startup and my event should work without any problems. Okay, now for real hardware. So if you have a real e-reader, I provide several save files for if you don't have the means or want to print the cards. You can also use a flash card for this part. 
navigate to the save file section on my GitHub and use whichever save, restore, and utility you prefer to put the .sav file onto your e-reader. For a real e-reader, you want to use the 128K saves. Once it's on the e-reader, you'll notice a third menu option that says saved application. This contains the e-cards data, and now you can send it over to the games. To do this, you want to use a link cable and not the wireless adapters. The link cable also needs to be inserted properly. If you take a look at it, there's a wider end and a thinner end. The wider end needs to go into the e-reader, and the thinner end needs to go into your GBA with the Pokemon game. Then load up Mystery Event and press A on the saved application, and the transfer should happen without any issues. For the flash cart, what you'll want to do is put an e-reader ROM onto it and head into the save file section of my GitHub and download the save file for the event that you want. I find that most flash carts need the 64 kilobyte saves, but you might need to test with both. After that, it should work the very same as the e-reader process that I just described. Last but not least is printing cards. This is a very, very finicky process, but I can just explain what I am using to do it, and you can try your best to replicate it. This is printing the .raw files on my GitHub using a real printer, then scanning them into the e-reader like you would with a normal card. To print, I use an HP PhotoSmart 7960 photo printer. This is an inkjet printer from like 2009. I use glossy photo paper, which is also HP brand. This is not an endorsement. I hate my printers. They're both HP. Do not buy HP products. Moving on. On the computer, I use a program called Dot Code Print by Firefly. It's a special printing program just for the dot codes. For the setup in Dot Code Print, I leave the X and Y coordinates at zero. I don't add anything to them. And I use 600 DPI. You should be experimenting with the DPIs and the offsets here. This could be different for your printer than it is for mine. This is just what I have to work with and what I've made work in the past. Then in printers and scanners, I go to the printer I want to use and I click printing preferences. Also, this sounds insane, but I am intentionally using the wrong driver for my printer. I picked the HP 8700 series driver for it because if I use the 7960 drivers, my dot codes don't scan. I don't know why this is. So you also might have to play around with drivers if your printer is particularly old like mine. Anyway, here I make sure to select letter sized paper and to not use borderless printing. I use 600 DPI here as well. The only other thing of import here is to make sure to not use grayscale print. I always print in full color. Also, if you're wondering, printing on the smaller photo style uh, paper will also work. I just don't tend to use it. Then in Ned C print, I click print and that's it. I let it dry for maybe a minute after printing, but otherwise this is my whole process. The card will scan and work right now. It just looks a little bit ugly and it's on a big piece of paper. I really don't have much other advice for you than try different papers, DPIs, printer settings, and drivers. I always got this to work with glossy photo paper. I have seen people say they needed matte paper. This could be very well dependent on your computer. As for making the cards look good, there is some extra work to that, and I'll go over that here. I print the dot codes I want first. Then in Google Docs, I have a template where I can line up the new designs that I've got with where the dot code will be, and it's available for anyone to use. First, download my completed card front and backs, which is the designs that I've got, and upload them to Google Docs, and line any card that is going to have a dot code on it with these borders. This will print the card design around the dot code, not interfering with it. And then once it's ready to print, print from Google Docs. Make sure to have the dot code face down and as the one that's getting printed, so it actually lines up. You should have a nice looking front of the card like this. If it's a two code card, I repeat the process of lining it up. Otherwise, you can just print the back wherever on the paper. After that, I cut them to size using a craft knife and scissors, and then I glue them together using wood glue. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully one of these methods will be available to you so you can experience these events. I put a lot of hard work and passion into them, and I just want as many people to experience them as possible. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments or join my Discord and ask in the e-reader section. Thanks very much and have a great day.